I do appreciate Mr. Inslee's metaphors, but let me say that the controversy over the leaked emails and their uh, contents cannot be ignored because it goes to the very basis upon which this debate has gone on for the last several years. And I see an awful lot of attempts by people in this room to shove that concern under the rug. I'm telling you now it will get worse rather than getting better. And I'll define what I mean by scientific fascism. These emails trash the scientific conclusions by those who have disputed Dr. Mann's hockey stick theory. There are information in the emails that the publication Climate Research in which they were published ought to be boycotted because they weren't doing the politically correct thing. And I understand that the editor of Climate Research ended up getting fired as a result. Now, there is intimidation in the scientific community by people who wish to be contrary to what the conventional wisdom is. And we are being asked as a Congress to make major changes in American society, in energy use, and on how much the out-of-pocket cost is to every person in this country uh, as a result of this debate. And we in Congress better get it right. The scientists may be able to change their story and do more research on it, but once Congress passes a law, it will be as difficult to repeal the consequences of that law as putting milk back into the cow. And we know all about cows in Wisconsin. Now, the denial has not stopped because six weeks ago, on uh, October 27th, Michael Mann wrote an email that says, in part, as we all know, this isn't about truth at all. It's about plausibly deniable accusations. We need to know the truth here before we can legislate in the name of the American people. Now, Dr. Holden, given the fact that you were involved in the email traffic that uh, has been released from the University of East Anglia uh, in England in the discrediting of the soon, the soon and uh, I'm mispronouncing uh, uh, Balayunas uh, a study on the hockey stick theory, and it's been considerably discredited. How can you be objective on this when you're testifying before Congress, advising the president and speaking the Ameri to the American public? Uh, f first of all, Congressman Sensenbrenner, let me, let me say that, that science is rough. Scientists are brutal in criticism. Anybody who's ever taken a doctoral exam uh, in natural science uh, understands that very well. Uh, so there's nothing unusual about uh, strong language in criticizing results of others that one has concluded are deeply wrong. The, uh, but you are defending the results of others that have since been well, proven right. Let, 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 let me uh, finish answering the question. How if can I, you be objective? If, if I may. We are all, when we testify, doing so on the basis of the best information available to us at the time as scientists. The notion that one cannot be objective because one has concluded that a particular study by particular people was deeply flawed, and that was my conclusion from reading the study by Soon and Balayunas, that it was deeply flawed, and that has been the conclusion of the great bulk of the rest of the community. That being so, I cannot be expected to be unbiased as to the merit of that particular study. I am biased by study. Okay. I am biased by having read it, okay. studied it, okay. and understood what's wrong with and it. And I respect your opinion on that, but it seems to me that other people ought to look into this. Now, I want to ask you a question that you can answer yes or no. You're the science advisor to the president. And I would like to ask you to guarantee Congress that you will provide the public, including us, access to all documents prepared with government funding relating to science change, and that includes studies that the IPCC uh, has either gotten or utilized so that nobody can wiggle out of this by saying that the IPCC is exempt from this because they're an international body. Will you give us that information and then allow the public, including other scientists, to be able to see it? After all, the taxpayers have paid for it. I, I'm not sure what all you're asking, Congressman, but I am absolutely in support 
of the public and the taxpayers having access to the results of research that they pay for. The only uh, constraints on that are research classified for national security reasons or research that is incomplete. It is a problem where people insist on the release of data that scientists have not yet even finished assembling because this leads to interpretations immediately on the basis of an incomplete picture. But once research is complete and is published uh, in the peer-reviewed literature or is submitted as a report for use by government policymakers, I do believe that all of the data behind that, all of the methods, all of the analysis should be made available to the Congress, the public, the taxpayers. Yes. You'll be getting a few letters from us to that effect. Gentleman's time has expired.